Okay, so candlesticks started out in around 1850 when a Japanese uh, rice trader started using technical analysis. It was, that was pretty much the first time candlesticks, like, or technical analysis similar to this, have been used. And then over the years, it's changed, obviously, since we have more modern technology and computers and stuff. And then, so this started in Japan. And here in the US has their own version of it that was uh, started by, by Charles Dow, but that's different technical analysis, and candlesticks was started by the Japanese. So candlesticks kind of work like this. Like this is this sometimes is green and this is sometimes red. So the green is overall goes up and red is overall goes down. So like the real body of it is when it's green or white, this is the open of the market, this is the close. And then this is the most it goes up on that day, that's the lead, that's the most it goes down on that day. Same for this, except this is the open and that's the close. So basically that's how the candlestick charts work. So the U.S. has their the this is this was started by the Japanese and this is like the U.S.'s version of candlesticks. It's a bar chart, but they basically show the same exact thing. Just these ones are hollow and filled, and these just have lines sticking out on the sides. So candlesticks, there are uh, small, short ones, and there are long ones. So the short ones kind of show indecision in the market. Like you can't really tell if it's going to be, if it's going to go up or not. But then, if it's really long, then it's like obvious if there are more buyers or if there's more supply or there's more demand. And this. Uh, is a special type of candlestick, and they don't, and it doesn't have any of the shadows. So, the open and close are the high and low. So it's like even more significant. Like there's more buying pressure or more selling pressure. So long uh, shadows. If it's like going in, if there's a long upper shadow or there's a long lower shadow. This can signify that there's going to be a change in the direction of the market because, like, this um, the fill candle with a long upper shadow, so it shows that uh, overall there were, there's more demand than supply, but there's starting to be more supply because at one point the there's more like more people wanted to buy, but then it went back down, so that might signify a shift in the market or like resistance to going. Up or down. Uh, spinning tops. This is basically the the shadows are like equal length. The upper and lower shadows are equal length, and they it's pretty much like a stalemate. Like nothing really changes much. Like but this pretty much equal supply and demand. This is a doji. So. These are like um, these also show a change, a shift in the market, and these often these are like pretty important because since there's no real buy, that means it op the market's open and closed at a similar price, which shows that like it might be starting to shift. Like if it's there's a long uh, losing streak and there's a few dojis, that might signify that there's starting to be more buyers that want, and it'll go up. This is still doji, it's just a um, longer shadow. Go down a little bit more. So this is like different doji and uh, candle pairs. And different pairs can signify different things. So like, 
For example, this one, after you find a long black candlestick of doji, indicates that selling pressure may be diminishing. And when there's a hollow candle and a doji, it signifies that there is that the buying pressure might be diminishing. Okay, those are doji, just longer shadows. And this one, dragonfly and gravestone. They're special because they're either missing an upper shadow or a lower shadow. And these pretty much, depending if it's at the end of an uptrend or a downtrend, that it changes the meaning of it. Like if there's an uptrend and then you see one of these, that means it's gonna probably shift and go the other way. So this depends on context. Those are like different common names. They're, they show all the different types of candles that there are. So these are like regular long candles. These are short. These look like hammer or hanging man. Um, yeah. And this is inverted hammer or shooting star. And then this is spinning top. So those are uh, a few of the possible candles that you can see. Now, um, what candlesticks don't tell you is they show you the low, high, open, close, but they don't tell you what happened in between the open and close. So they, like as you see here, you could go down and up and then down, or you could go up, down, up, or any possible other combination. There's pretty much infinite combinations that could happen, infinite possibilities that could happen in one day. This is a star position. So these are like different combinations of these candles meaning different things. This is a star position. So there are like morning stars and evening stars. And basically what it is, is there's a candle, long candle, and then there's a gap, and then there's another candle. Like there's a gap between the close and then the open of the next day. And it usually signifies a shift in the market. This is Harami. So basically, the first one is a long candle, and then the other one is kind of like a smaller candle, like nestled within like the open and close of the previous candle. And this signifies high volatility. So like pretty much anything like big can happen. There can be a big shift up or down. So these are hammer and hanging man, and depending if it's at the top of an uptrend or bottom of a downtrend, they the name changes. So basically, it's a uh, a short a short real body, and then there's a long shadow going down. And this um, shows like indecision. Like so, first let's say there's a lot of uh, demand uh, demand. But then the supply goes back up, so the price goes back up. But that might show that there's going to be a change in the market, or there's resistance to it going up higher or lower. So this is like just examples in a chart of what they look like. So if it's at the bottom, it's called a hammer. If it's at the top, it's a hanging man. And you see after it, it starts to go. It starts to go the other way. Inverted hammer and shooting star. So it's basically the same thing as the hammer and the hanging man. It's just flipped the other way. You can scroll down. So this is inverted hammer. This is shooting star. And they basically mean the similar things. Um, now these different patterns. They, all of these different patterns, if you add them up, they come out to be usually either a hammer or a shooting star. So if you go down, like this is a bullish engulfing pattern, if you see this, or bearish engulfing, and then when you add them up, they turn out to be a hammer or shooting star. That's more patterns that add up. Uh, go down. This 